The following is a special presentation of HBO Sports, celebrating 20 years of World Championship Boxing. Vegas, Nevada, a city where we've grown accustomed to expecting the unexpected. But never could we have imagined the series of events that unfolded on November 6th, when Riddick Bowe defended his heavyweight crown against Evander Holyfield. While serenity has now returned to this 20 by 20 foot ring, indelible images remain of the battle that took place just earlier and the bizarre events which surrounded it. It is a night we will never forget. Hello, I'm Jim Lampley. We are about to take you back now to the events of an unforgettable evening, the rematch of the heavyweight championship fight of November 13, 1992, between Riddick Bowe and Evander Holyfield. As the fight approached, the odds in favor of Bowe were dropping dramatically. Most of the last-minute money on this fight coming in on Holyfield, apparently from the hands of betters who were moved by Bowe's having weighed in, apparently overweight, at 246 pounds. Larry Merchant... Evander Holyfield told us before the fight, as he told the public, that he had erred in his fight plan in the first time around and that he would change it the second time around. Many fighters have said that. Few have succeeded. Did you suspect that he would be any different? Well, I thought he had a chance, but uh, maybe General Custer would have thought he had a chance if there was a chance to do it a second time as well at Little Bighorn. Can you do it differently? That's the first question. If you do it differently, will it matter? especially with all those Indians around you. And the way that everyone was looking at Riddick Bowe, why he was a, a whole tribe of Indians, a great looking, young, big, strong, heavyweight champion. The thing about Evander Holyfield was that he was unhappy with himself as a warrior, not because he had lost that championship fight, but because he didn't do right by himself, he felt. Perhaps he hadn't prepared right, certainly he hadn't fought right, and he got a second chance. He made the most of it, we all know now. And I guess we all know as well that uh, given a second chance, uh, General Custer would have gotten out of Little Bighorn alive too. Okay, Larry, and of course, working with us at ringside throughout the fight was former heavyweight champion and heavyweight contender, George Foreman. George, coming into this second battle between Holyfield and Bo, what did you see as the biggest difference in the competitive environment between the two? Hunger. This time, Riddick Bow, in the previous fight, he literally jumped through the ropes. This time, he barely crawled through. He was uh, overweight. He was ashamed of him, his body. His trunks was up too high to hide 
some of the flab that he was uh, unconsciously, he was, he was ashamed, he was embarrassed of. When you get into a fight like that, you can never do what you want to. Half of it is trying to hide the girth. <laughs> and as we now know, that created just enough of an advantage for Holyfield to take advantage of it. But let's go back now to the evening of November 6, 1993, an evening which, because of a series of bizarre and disturbing events, and because of a sensational boxing match, will long be remembered in this sport. In the role of challenger, Evander Holyfield will enter the ring first, attempting to become the fourth former heavyweight champion to regain the title, Lloyd Patterson against Ingemar Johansson in 1960, Muhammad Ali against George Foreman in 1974, and then against Leon Spinks in 1978. And in the alphabet soup of the 80s in the heavyweight division, Tim Witherspoon also secured that accomplishment. Jim, everyone who is interested in this fight knows that Evander has been saying that he fought the wrong fight the last time, an aggressive fight in the hopes that he would wear Bo down. What everyone doesn't really know is that he was so overconfident of winning that fight that he took Bo so lightly that according to his former trainers, Lou Duver and Georgie Benton, on a scale of 10, his preparation for that fight was a seven. They had difficulty getting him to spar. They had difficulty getting him in the gym. And that is so uncharacteristic of what we feel about him that it's more amazing how he fought in that fight. I mean, when I heard that, I thought, gee, this is like uh, Rush Limbaugh and Howard Stern taking a vow of silence that Ernie, that Holyfield wouldn't be in the gym. And of course, Larry Merchant mentioned that Lou Duva and George Benton are now the former trainers of Evander Holyfield. He enters the ring with his new co-manager, Hammer, and behind him, the new trainer, Emmanuel Stewart. For so long, such a familiar face in the sport, trainer of many terrific fighters out of his Kronk gymnasium in Detroit, most notably Thomas Hitman Hearns, who scored a one-round knockout over Andrew Maynard on the undercard here. Here is a look at the record for Evander Holyfield. 29 wins, the one loss to Riddick Bow, 22 KOs, but since winning the heavyweight championship against Buster Douglas October 25, 1990, Holyfield has fought 55 rounds and produced only one knockdown in those 55 rounds. That was in the title defense against Burt Cooper in his hometown of Atlanta. And here is Riddick Bowe ready now for the second defense of the IBF heavyweight title, the third defense of the WBA heavyweight title. The discrepancy is the product of the fact that the International Boxing Federation, the IBF, refused to recognize the defense against Jesse Ferguson in Washington, D.C., saying that Ferguson wasn't a worthy opponent. Which Bowe then went out and proved. I have to ask you something again, George. Riddick Bowe is building himself a house in Maryland with a 16-car garage, a four-lane bowling alley, a three-chair barbershop, a 5,000-square-foot swimming pool, and a huge bedroom with a kitchen in it. George is no longer hungry. <laughs> he doesn't even look hungry anymore. George, did you ever think of putting a kitchen in a bedroom? Yep. <laughs> I think Larry you wrong, got the wrong question. You asked the wrong guy. That's just what I'm saying. You know, but some guys just know how to live better. They have greater imaginations. But it tells you you want to put the kitchen in the bedroom, what he intends to do, huh? Well, it's something that Riddick wanted to do with the huge sums of money he has already earned and expects to earn in the future as heavyweight champion. Of course, Evander Holyfield would like to knock a few thousand square feet off that floor plan. The way he's bundled up, it looks like he's, he's coming up to the mark for the downhill skiing championship at the Olympics. It is chilly here. <laughs> belts enter the ring ahead of Bo. Already in the ring is ubiquitous manager Rock Newman. There is the 80-plus year old trainer, Eddie Butch, the sport's most celebrated octogenarian, the man whom Bo calls Papa Smurf. And here is the record
record for Riddick Bowe, unbeaten to this point in his career. 34 wins, 29 knockouts, one of the five decisions, of course, the 12 round unanimous decision over Evander Holyfield 51 weeks ago tonight. This fight was preceded by a weigh-in that took place 55 hours before fight time. Here's what happened. The challenger, the former champion, Evander Holyfield. Evander Holyfield weighs in at 217 pounds. Next up on the scales, the man who holds the WBA and IBF World Championships, Riddick Bowe. 246. He weighs in at 246 pounds. So both fighters come to the ring considerably heavier than was the case last November 13. It was Bo's weight of 246, which aroused the most notice, suggesting that there's much more than fruit in those fruit of the looms. Now let's take a look at the tail of the tape. And you will see that Riddick Bo has a five-year age advantage, a two-and-a-half-inch height advantage. He's 29 pounds heavier as opposed to 30 pounds heavier a year ago and a three-and-a-half-inch reach advantage over Evander Holyfield. Watching that tape and this tail of the tape, you wonder whether Evander Holyfield is going to try to get to that new soft underbelly of the champion. And let's take a look at punch stat numbers, Larry. And here they are. Here's how active they were in the last fight. Bo threw 50% more punches than Holyfield and landed 50% more punches. And here is a clue to what will happen tonight. If Evander Holyfield can throw twice as many jabs as he did last time, that will mean he's following his battle plan to do more boxing and less slugging. Rules of the bout from our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. Harold. Riddick Bowe and Evander Holyfield will box tonight using the rules of the International Boxing Federation. 12 rounds. There is no standing eight count. No three knockdown rule. You cannot be saved by the, by the bell in any round, including the last round. Only the referee can stop the fight. And in case the cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, and that cut causes the fight to be stopped, we go to the scorecards. If the six rounds have been completed before that, it's a technical draw. Jim. Thank you very much, Harold. And now for the official introductions, let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer. Spencer Promotions, main events monitor, and the undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Bud Weiser, proud to be your bud, present the featured bout of the evening. This bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, the World Boxing Association, and the International Boxing Federation. The officials for Nevada are Chairman Dr. Elias Ghanem, Commissioners Nat Carasali, Luther Mack, Bruce Lane, and Dr. James Nave, Executive Director Mark Ratner, the three physicians in attendance at ringside, Dr. Flip Romansky, Dr. James Wishgame, and Dr. Robert Voy. Timekeeper Mike Latella. Counting for the knockdown seconds, James Cavan. Representing the IBF, as supervisor is its president, Robert W. Lee Sr. And here for the WBA, as supervisor ringside, Dr. Elias Cordova Jr. The scoring for this bout will be done on a 10-point must system, and the three judges assigned at ringside will be Jerry Roth, Chuck Jampa, and Patricia Jarman. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, working for the 71st time in a world title bout, referee Mills Lane. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the site where legends are made, Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, let's get ready to rumble! for the heavyweight championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the gold trunks with black trim and weighing 217 pounds. This 1984 Olympic medalist has a professional record of 29-1 with 22 KOs. 
He is a former two-time undisputed world champion in two different divisions. Ladies and gentlemen, from Atlanta, Georgia, the challenger and former heavyweight champion of the world, Evander Hill, Hill, Holy Hill. Across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white trunks with red trim, and weighing in at 246 pounds. He's also an Olympic medalist, winning super heavyweight silver in 1988. Since turning professional, his record is a perfect 34 and 0, 29 by knockout victory. And tonight, he defends his title for the third time. Ladies and gentlemen, from Brooklyn, New York, presenting. The undefeated heavyweight champion of the world, Ready? Big Daddy Bo! Okay, now, Eddie, Eddie, I want to tell you, if he goes right here, I'm not going to call it low. That's going to be all right. Fair enough? All right, now, we, this, this is with the championship of the world. We've already gone through all the instructions one time. I expect a tough, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Any questions from the challenger? Any questions from the champion? Let's get it on. Jim, the only sequels I can think of that live up to the originals were... Ali Fraser 3 and Godfather 2, but everybody is here hoping this fight can live up to the original. It's asking an awful lot. If it's even half as good, it will be, as 1993 goes, a memorable fight. One thing I gotta tell you that's a pleasure for me about this, as Bo comes Holyfield with two overhand rights to start the fight. But George Foreman, a heavyweight championship fight. Bo, all the action so far, and there's a hard right. Bo should never try to waste that kind of energy on a fighter like Evander Holyfield, who recovers. He gets hurt, but he recovers too much. Bo came in looking as though he was thinking first round knockout. A lot of right hands, one of them to the body, several to the head, and now Evander has weathered that early storm. And you can get a first round knockout, but you got to do it properly. You got to set it up with Evander Holyfield. You don't disrespect a guy who doesn't believe in his heart. He lost the first fight anyway. The first time Bo fought Holyfield, he was really proud of his body. This time, he's got his trunks way above his waist. He's a lot to be ashamed of, so he's not. He's trying to get this thing over with as quick as he can to compensate for his lack of uh, happiness with himself physically. It's more than just the extra 11 pounds. He looks softer all over, right, George? Yeah, he is not proud of his body tonight. That You don't want that in a young fighter. Holyfield steps in with a left to the side of the head and a right to the chest. Bo lands a jab and a right hand. Holyfield claimed he would box, said that he would stick the jab. Already, Bo has tried to lure him into a bit of a war. Rick Bo has made the awful mistake of going out there at that kind of weight, wasting that much energy too quick. Could it made him. the first round tougher for him. Yeah. He should forget they've ever fought before and go out there and set it all up with the left jab, win this fight on a great defense. I don't know what's happened. Who gave him the advice to try to knock Holyfield out in one round? George, I thought that he thought he hurt Holyfield early and he wanted to jump on him, and then he found out that he really hadn't hurt him, and he stepped back, and now he's boxing again. Yeah. No, he really planned on getting out there knocking this guy out in the first round. This Jesse Ferguson thing gave him a false sense of security. You may be right. Trading punches at center ring. Holyfield ending the exchange there. And as both men conserve energy a little bit, the point I wanted to make, George, two relatively clean livers, both of them serious, devoted fathers, both of them the kind of people who treat reporters like us with respect and courtesy. It's hard to root against either of these two guys. You gotta wonder, Riddick Bowe, we're talking about clean living, 
He's eating a lot of lot more pork chops than Evander Holyfield. Spare ribs and everything. Well, pork is cleaner than a lot of other stuff, but you make a good point. It's not so much the pork, it's just that he eats it. To, to let Holyfield know he's not going to let him box. And he thought he had him hurt here, and he came out to put some intimidation on him, perhaps. What Holyfield has to do is to land something important so that Bo doesn't get so reckless and gives him the room to fight his fight. Holyfield has already established to Bo, this is going to be a long night, buddy, and you're going to get yourself a nice little whipping. You may beat me, but you're going to get ripped. Well, but after all the talk of boxing, Holyfield came out and threw a total of four jabs in round number one. So he is back to the warrior mentality we've seen in the past. He did a lot of uh, retreating, which was good. Now his boat is back on track. He's using his jab, standing on the ball, got his balance real good. Starting to blow his nose a little too early. He can swell up real easy. Bo sticking the jab. You notice, George, they use the in-swell under both of Bo's eyes between rounds. Holyfield lands a right and takes one in return. But believe me, Bo got the worst of that exchange. Mills Lane warning Bo about holding and hitting. Jabbing. Everything he does, he, he moves first and then he retreats good afterwards. Left hook landed for Holyfield. Bo was wide open for it and he dropped the right hand. Holyfield moves to the right and left and then hits and then he moves out of the way. And now Evander starts to stick the jab with regularity. And Bo seems a bit befuddled by that. Reaching out with his right hand because Evander Holyfield is not there like he was the first time. This round started well for Riddick Bowe, but it appears in danger of ending badly for the champion. Now, now he sticks the jab again. Evander Holyfield is setting things up for a good right hand. He's jabbing to the body to get this guy conscious of a body punch, and he's intending to drop him with a right hand. And another left hook landed flush for Holyfield. And now Bo tries to show off his in-fighting skills. One of the big weapons in Bo's arsenal, he is regarded as a great in-fighter, particularly for a big man. Holyfield is counting on a counter right hand. If he catches Bo, he's going to drop him. Bo should just stick, stick with his left jab until the four or five rounds and open up with the right hand later. That was Bo who landed the right hand. That one missed a little short. the jab once in a while instead of before you throw it. See? Paint, paint a lot. He's a little tight. You react. Break on off, okay? So if you get him tired, then you're going to turn it on going down the stretch, okay? Okay. All right, you're looking good. Fighting Third a perfect round. fight. Vaseline, man. You're... No, he don't need too much. He don't like too much Vaseline. Uh -huh. The jab. The right hand, come up, come back and get up to it. Keep your hands up. He'll start leading with right hands now. All right. Every time you shoot that right hand roller counter, but you're looking beautiful. Hey! Yeah. Yeah. Evander Holyfield has said that a race car, good race car, doesn't need a new engine. It just needs to be tuned up a little differently sometimes. So far, he has tuned up for this fight differently than the first one. It's kind of weird after all these years to go to Evander's corner and listen to Emmanuel Stewart instead of George Benton and Lou Duba. Right hand over the top by Bo. I'm reminded of the phrase that Howie Long used to describe playing against Marcus Allen, like watching your wife cook in someone else's kitchen. <laughs> Riddick Bo is 
Kalan Holyfield to move around on his feet a little too much. He should try to disrupt that. How, George? Well, he's letting him bounce and get relaxed out there. What you got to do is put the pressure on him, make him fight, make him fight without fighting himself with this jab. Get right to the body. That was good by Riddick Bowe. By Bow, Excellent right to the body. You see, Holyfield is so relaxed out there, you can't let him just keep doing that bounce, move, bounce, move. You pick a fight with him and then make him stand still. Riddick faking the right and Bo flinching away. Or check it, Holyfield flinching away, I should say. Jab landed twice. Right hand wasn't there. That time the right caught leather from Holyfield's glove. Holyfield pawing with the jab now and lands a right hand in close. And if Holyfield continues to land those pecky right hands, it'd be of the, an advantage to him as the fight go on. Bo has got big eyes, and they seem to swell up easy. Shouldn't try to land a heavy shot, not too soon. Riddick not looking assertive in round three. We're getting to double up on the jab, taking a left there and complaining to Mills Lane that Holyfield had tried to glove him in the eye. It is Evander who throws combinations. Bo throwing one punch at a time. Evander Holyfield is the best combination fighter of the two. Bo is a better right-hand shot, but Bo Holyfield is the best combination fighter. And things are going well for Holyfield at this point. Now Bo is picking up his jab. He can win this fight with a jab if he so chooses. If he remembers to double and triple up with it. Because every time he throws just one jab, Holyfield looks to counter over the top, George. The thing about it, Holyfield has not landed one good left hook to the body yet. And if he starts landing that left hook to the body, that right hand is going to come a lot easier for Evander Holyfield. He's got to remember to throw it there first. He's yeah, been he's doing a lot of head hunting. Yeah. Right hand by Bo. And it hurt for Holyfield. the fight so far. It hurt Evander. That right hand hurt. Get it to slow down now. Yeah, I see. Yeah. <laughs> Keep that stick going. Keep that stick going. When you get him near the ropes, uh -huh. to use the hook and cross. Now here's where Bro will complain of a thumb right there. You really can't see the thumb. There was these no gloves. thumb. There, there didn't seem to be any. He complained also, if you may recall, in the first fight. That looked like a clean left hook. All the way. Later in the round, some good inside shots by Bo. Bo is an extremely well-schooled, polished big man. I don't think I've ever seen a big man as polished as Bo is. And you see the statistical edges for Bo through round three in punch count numbers. But it is Holyfield who has been more vigorous, more energetic, throwing more combinations. Bo getting more accurate now as time goes on. Here comes the clowning I told you about. Holyfield starting to go to the body. Bo comes upstairs, lands a left hook. Remember, he punctuated round three with a terrific right cross. Because Riddick Bo decides to clown with a, with a real Olympic champion. You just can't clown with certain guys. Left hook by Holyfield. Bo going to the body. Action reminiscent of round 10 in the first fight. One of the great rounds in the recent history of boxing. In the first fight, Riddick Bo was so thin that his hands just moved by themselves. This time he's got to do so much with so much effort. So little with so much effort. Holyfield leaping in and taking a right to the body and That's another the shot. Cut and a right hand over the top. That's the shot that Evander can't take is that uppercut of Bowe. When Evander leans in like this, he is susceptible to that uppercut, George. That's right. That can, that's the bread and butter punch for Riddick Bowe is that uppercut. They trade leather at close quarters. Holyfield trying to remember to go to the body. He better remember to get out of there. 
Got too many rounds left to start mixing it up with the big guy. You don't want to go shoulder to shoulder with Riddick Bowe. He is too sharp and has too many weapons inside. And not only that, as he leans on you with that 246, 50 pounds, really, it starts to wear those thin legs of Evander Holyfield down. That's a strategy you understand pretty well, huh? Yeah, you, you, you lean on him and you keep leaning and the thin legs can't take it. is anything but polished. He hasn't thrown one good straight right hand yet. So you and Larry have a disagreement here about yeah, those everything techniques. is under and on top and slap. If he throws a right hand, throw straight right hand, he drop it he down the hole of field right now. Tried to do it there, but missed. He just haven't gotten one straight shot going. I'll agree with one thing with you, George, though. He can win the fight with the jab if That's he sticks all. with it and a straight right hand, but everything is slapped on side the jaw. Abrasion above the left eye of Riddick Bowe. There may be blood beginning to emerge from Bowe's left eye. Holyfield lands a right, right on the target. And a left hand for Holyfield. And they swing and swing after the bell. And look at this. seen so many blows landed after a bell. Have you, George? Not many, and but most were all slaps. <laughs> it's a real good slap match at this time, and that's why there's going to be a lot of cuts. One thing it did is to limit the amount of time that Bo's corner had to work on his two cuts above the left eye and in the center of the brow, right between the eyes. They've got a real good cut man, though. In the fourth round, Evander Holyfield took 70 shots at Riddick Bowe and landed 43 of them. 61% connect percentage. Evander's got to be real careful and not to work, try to work on that cut. Just continue to box. And round four was a 90 punch round for Bowe, who seems a little out of gas now as the fifth begins. Just came in a little too big around the midsection for that kind of fighter. He doesn't have a good straight punch. He wings on top and it burns you out too quick. And that cut in the middle of the brow is gonna bleed, George. It could affect his vision as time goes on. This is the time you go back to school. Use your left jab, forget about a knockout. Use your left jab. He could win it with his left jab. I don't know why they didn't tell him that. He's becoming an easy target for Holyfield as the trickle of blood begins to bother him. But he still has this good, big right hand if he can ever make it go straight. Now Holyfield cut Alex Stewart in the first round of their fight on June 26th. And after that became a less effective fighter as he tried to target the cut. That's there true. he lands a right hand and Bo comes back with a right and a left. But Bo is doing all of his stuff real close. He's ineffective. He's got to keep this man on the outside of his shots. He can do something. When they are in close, all, he's got this right uppercut that he just refuses to use. We've never seen Riddick Bo cut like this. It'll be interesting to see what they can do between rounds five and six. Do you think they can stop that bleeding, George? Not at all. It's in the places where you just can't stop them. The, the jab just bounces off the side of your nose and in the middle of your face. You just can't stop cuts when they get in that area. Short left hand stuns Holyfield and knocks him back. Evander recovers rapidly, as he always has. I think the big mistake was to allow Bo to go through with this fight in that kind of condition. Overconfidence will always happen with the young guy. Did it happen to you, George, when you were young? Yeah, with Muhammad Ali, 
I wasn't in shape, but I said I can whip this old guy. Bro may be hurt. He is hurt. Bro is hurt. Holyfield gunning for a stoppage here. It would shock the world. Stuns Bo again. And the round comes to a close to Bell saving Riddick Bo from further punishment. And here's where Bo hurts him, right in there. <clears throat> that left followed by that short right, the right behind his head. Riddick Bo is hurt. Evander Holyfield took his time before he carried the fight to Bo, hoping that Bo would spend himself chasing Holyfield. Instead of going at him early this way, he has waited. And right now, he is on top in this fight. Evander Holyfield trying to join Muhammad Ali and Floyd Patterson as two big name fighters in the history of the sport to regain the heavyweight championship after having lost it. Tim Witherspoon accomplished the same thing on paper in the 80s, but few remember that. You gotta be real careful now with a young fella like Riddick Bowie. His corner's gotta be watching this carefully, not only can he lose this fight, but he can get his career destroyed if he loses him properly now. Sometimes there's a towel that you can always throw in if it gets too rough. Because he's not only being whipped, he's being cut bad. The blood, you lose a lot of your strength. Holyfield commanding with the jab. Bo once again starting very slowly in this round. Bo is not starting, Bo is now surviving. There he is, slapping with the right hand again, George. Yeah, he has, he's not, uh, I don't consider him at all polished. He's got power because he's big. But if he had a good straight right hand, Evander Holyfield is easy picking to him at any time. Holyfield is doing something he doesn't know how to do now. That's get aggressive. Well, he's always been aggressive, but he's never been a great finisher. Yeah, but he goes forward and he just hit, hit a lot himself. Boom! Great combination by Holyfield. And another one. Bo standing still at center ring and taking it. That right hand landed flush for Holyfield. The way to keep your respect, Holyfield should be concentrating on it because... If he continues to deliver accurate shots to Riddick Bow and doesn't drop him, Riddick Bow can lose total respect and start to jump back on him real good. And Bo looked to the corner to try to gain some advice from Eddie Futch, and Futch was nowhere for him to see him. Hidden behind other figures over here. Holyfield banging away. Round six, a huge one for the former champion. Evander Holyfield should continue to keep his respect for Riddick Bow because a big man like that catching you with one of those roundhouses, you're going to hit the floor. Like Lennox Lewis did to Frank Bruno when he was in so much trouble in Cardiff, Wales. Seeing that Holyfield has got no defense for an uppercut, I don't know why Bo is not throwing it. Riddick Bo ridiculed Lewis for all the difficulty he suffered true. at the hands of Frank Bruno. That's true. Now he's getting a lot of the same from Holyfield, but that right hand may have turned things it, around, George. It was a good pinpoint accurate right hand. If he continues to do that, he won't have a hard night. But the Holyfield goes forward, he doesn't know what he's doing. Spectacular uppercut by Evander. Last 10 seconds of round number six. We're almost at the midway point of the fight. And what a battle it's been, particularly for Evander Holyfield. The I got it. You got the Harold Letterman, how do you have the score, the Larry, fight scored so far? Larry, I've still got Riddick Bow on top, four rounds to two. Uh, 
58-56 in the points. I thought Riddick Bowe was very, very busy in the first four rounds. One and on clean punching and effective aggressiveness. Certainly in round five, Evander Holyfield turned the fight around completely. He's coming back. He's on top now. Uh, he seems to have taken control of the fight, and he certainly is banging Riddick Bowe around in the last two rounds. I think there's going to be a tremendous controversy over the referee because Mills didn't get in quick enough at the end of the fourth round. Controversy or not, Harold, you and I couldn't disagree more. I have a man of Holyfield ahead four rounds to one and one even. I see it like that myself, <laughs> but then I never could have been a good judge. <laughs> But Riddick Bowe has tasted all of the power event that Holyfield has now. He's not scared. He realizes that his corner cannot help him. Look, you're a big boy. you got to fight your way out of this. And he's, he's willing to do it. Bowe's going back to sticking the jab. And when he does, he backs Evander up. It was that way last year. It's that way again. Right hand for Holyfield. Stuns Bowe. And Bowe comes back fighting this time and lands a right hand on Holyfield's chin. Holyfield isn't being smart. He, hand, he hits a good right hand. He hits him with a good right hand, and he stands there and waits to see what he's going to do. You got to hit and move out of the way if you want to win that kind of style, with that style. Bo taking command right now with the jab. Someone is telling... And somebody in a parachute has just landed on the edge of the ring, has been pulled away by security guards. The fight has been brought to a halt. There's a massive melee at ringside as this fellow with a motorized parachute has landed right on top of spectators and officials at ringside. He's in the midst of a mass of security guards now. Rock Newman, Riddick Bowe's manager, was right there. This is a monumental disaster. Right now, police are filing by me at ringside and grabbing this gentleman who has created a monstrosity of an interruption in the bout. His parachute has caught itself up on a row of ring lights. Now, we're going to take a look at an earlier shot of the parachutist before he came down. There he was on the left of the ring. And let's see what happened as he approached ringside. There it is. He hung himself up right on the lights, as you see there, and his body landed on the ring apron right on top of a variety of people. Well, this is the most bizarre thing I've ever seen at a prize fight. And I've seen a few things so dangerous things. about this. It wasn't only a parachute. He's got some motorized exactly. Sand on there. It, it's a it heavy up a lot of people. It's a heavy capsule under that parachute with a motorized attachment. There could have been a propeller there for all we know, George. And if nobody has been hurt, it will be a near miracle. I've seen blood on one hand out there. Rock Newman, Bo's manager, went nuts. It could be the best thing to happen to Riddick Bo if there's a 10 or 20 minute delay, as now seems You're possible. Right. It may be an angel out of the sky. You see Bo covering Riddick, up to stay warm for Riddick Bo. Well, they're going to work on his cuts right now. Just when you think you've seen everything, <laughs> you know you haven't, and there'll be more crazy stuff to follow. And it was already a bizarre night as the result of the fighting that went past the bell for about 10 seconds at the end of round four. Here's what was happening in the ring at the time that the parachutist landed. You'll see, there he is, entering at the left side. And you see people backing away and trying to avoid the capsule and the motorized contraption attached to it. Here's a look at him much, much earlier this evening from our blip coverage. As this took place, we are told that our blip cameraman tried to alert us to the possibility that this was going to happen. That's why he was zooming in and out, as you can see here. And there it is. He targeted the ring and came right down. Well, this guy is going to wind up in the slammer in Vegas tonight, and with doggone good reason. Well, what charges, I wonder? Well, uh, what 
charges? Yeah. <laughs> Doing an outrageous thing to get some publicity for himself. Oh, okay. <laughs> Lighting company turning off lights now to try to prevent the possibility of fire. If Evander Holyfield is thinking about this at all, he has to rue the fact that it happened at a time when he was in such good position in the fight, or so it seemed. And here's another look, guys. We're going to see it one more time. This was incredibly dangerous. I've got to say that it's put a jolt through us because he landed about seven or eight feet away from us on the ring apron. And this is how he descended toward the small disaster which has now taken place at ringside in round seven of a heavyweight championship fight. You can see how our cameraman zoomed in and out attempting to warn our production people in the truck of the possibility this would happen. And I have just gotten word that Riddick Bowe's wife has just fainted at ringside. She was even closer to the parachutist than in trying to recapture his title. An unmarked Evander Holyfield. Two cuts on Riddick Bowe, one above the left eye and one above the bridge of the nose. As they begin round number nine, two-thirds of the way through the fight. Hunt is in round eight, Bo landing more, Holyfield a higher percentage, both men punching accurately. Riddick Bo is getting kind of desperate with that right hand now. He needs to set it up with the jab. He's got to set it up behind a jab, and it can, be, it can happen real easily if he only believed in it. And once the big guys land two good shots, they get tired and they got to suck in some air. Crowd gets excited for Bo a little bit as he presses Holyfield against the ropes, but Evander seems fully recovered from that one big right hand shot. Now, Evander should jump right back on the big guy when he throws four shots like that because he doesn't have any oxygen afterwards. It's called get right back. Bo's jab is good now if he can only continue. He's coming behind the jab. He could come back in this fight if he keeps throwing the jab like that for That's the last it. four rounds. Barrett sets up the right hand again. Easily. And there again. Holyfield should just forget trying to slug it out with this guy. Hurt him and get it out of the way. Holyfield staying in, becoming a target. Bo starting to heat up. Riddick loses a little steam and pause with the jab instead of sticking it hard as he did earlier in the round. Holyfield has tended to dominate the last minutes of the round as Bo has run out of gas and Holyfield's superior conditioning has shown up. And at this point, we're starting to see Vander Holyfield's left hook to the body, which we hadn't seen earlier. Bo is trying to counteract by going below the belt. This time, Holyfield doesn't ask the referee for help as he did the first time. Solid right hand inside by Bo. Holyfield, Holyfield leaned into it. Holyfield actually landed the right hand first that time. Another right hand. Left-right combination. Bo misses with the uppercut. But why Holyfield leans in after he lands that right hand, I don't know. Throws the right hand and falls right into Bo. Double left hook by Bo, maybe the first time in the fight. Holyfield comes back with two left hooks of his own and an uppercut. And another flurry to end the round by Evander Holyfield. And again, Lane has to keep him apart. That was a champion's round by Bo. He's trying to reassert himself. Come on, we got to go from here. Okay, we're going now. Harold, how do you have to fight now? Larry, I've got an 86-85 Riddick Bow, five rounds to four. I thought Riddick Bow pulled out the the, uh, the last round, the ninth round at the very end. Uh, I just think it's a very, very close fight. Certainly, I thought that Evander Holyfield won rounds five through eight. 
I have Holyfield well ahead, six rounds to two, one even. Well, that's the most dramatic disparity we've had in a while in HBO scoring, that's for sure. Push him around, rub him up. You hear that? Rub him up, Bow. Rub him up. Eddie Futz telling Riddick Bow, rip him around, rough him up. He wants Bo to try to get Holyfield to brawl again. In fighting, where Bo may have the advantage. Why wow, Holyfield lays in there with that big man it was a great mistake. It's the only thing he knows how to do, George. It isn't necessary at all. You get your shots and run away. Warrior's heart, warrior's mentality. We're into the 10th round, and of course, you can't forget what happened in the 10th round a year ago when the two men fought a pitched battle with a seesaw momentum. First, Bo dominating and seeming on the verge of a knockout, then Holyfield coming back. Once again, 51 weeks later, they are trading leather in the 10th. Holyfield is doing so good when he lands two or three jabs, move out of the way, go back and do it again. He shouldn't fall forward once he does it. Clean jab, snapping Bo's head back. Holyfield much the sharper puncher so far in round 10. Bo landed a right inside. You better be careful. Bo is trying to use every dirty trick in the book, hitting below the belt, hitting on the break, waiting for the bell to land another shot. interested in holding a little bit these days. Buying time? Yeah, he shouldn't try to stay in close with the big guy because his legs aren't strong enough to keep pushing that weight off like that. Holyfield Although he's got muscles. Him. Yep. Trading and trading. Step back and get back to that. You get the feeling that Bo, if he ever throws a two good right, straight right hands, he can end this fight. Why Holyfield mixes it up? George Evander's got a pretty good chin. You didn't get him down. Amen to that. <laughs> Round 10, a bit of a lull now. Right hand by Holyfield inside, rocks Bo back. But he shouldn't try to go for the knockout. Just land the shot, be content and start all over again. He gives Bo a chance to come back with an uppercut of his own. Holyfield leaning forward against the major power of Riddick Bo, that uppercut, and knocking Bo's mouthpiece out with a left hook. Another tremendous rally by former champion Evander Holyfield. And gentlemen, that was a tenth round. senses that he has the fight in his hands and that the champion is on the defensive and he's going at him he's not going to give him a chance at a distance he feels comfortable inside now George you just saw the mouthpiece flying out and once again that is a kind of symbol of what's been happening in this fight what a tremendous effort by Holyfield what a test for Bo as champion coming up in these next six minutes. You would think it was Handel's Messiah here a month and a half before Christmas as the crowd chants, holy, 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 and Holyfield delivers another right hand. Riddick Bo has been doing a lot of bashing on Holyfield, talking about him, saying cruel things, and you'd be surprised the public just doesn't like that all the time. 
to say nothing of Holyfield. Holyfield marshaled his anger. He never went back at Bo in those news conferences when Riddick called him a jughead and a gargoyle. He saved his ammunition for tonight. Vanda's saving everything for counter right hands. And he's moving good. When they fought last, his feet were more stable. He didn't bounce around like this in the 10th, 11th round. Left hook inside by Holyfield. He stands in front of Bo, but Bo seems not to have the ammunition to go after the target right now. Now, really Bo's corner told him when they get Evander Holyfield against the rope, go for it. And he, this is the first time he's tried it. George, do you think after all these rounds and all the shots that Bo has taken, that he still has the strength to knock out Evander Holyfield? I do believe. You remember, you talk about how polished he is, but he hasn't landed that good polished right hand that he has. If he gets it, he can win this thing. I think Evander Holyfield has taken the polish off him. Holyfield winning most of the exchanges at close range against a guy regarded as a terrific infighter. Bo not quick enough tonight. Now looking more and more hesitant as he tries to find the target with time running out. Bo is a desperate man. You just don't fool around with desperate guys like this. There's that right hand just inches away from being on the target by Riddick Bowen. Riddick Bow promised his followers a knockout in this fight. Now he is fighting to survive, or so it would seem. Round 11 rapidly coming to a close. And surely Evander Holyfield believes in it. Why is that kind of right hand? Evander Holyfield has been waiting for that right hand all night. It's the same one that dropped Buster Douglas. It hit him, it didn't hurt him, but he got him with it. Ten seconds to go in the 11th. He got him again. Got him again. This right hand shots by Holyfield. Surely he believes in his heart, regardless of what's on those judges' scorecards, that he's three minutes away from taking his title back. Giving a second chance and making the most of it. Conventional wisdom that Evander Holyfield no longer had the fire to fire back like this against a big young champion. see the fight quickly. Larry, a little bit closer than you. 105, 104, six rounds to five of Anda Holyfield. But for the first time all night, our Harold Letterman now has Holyfield in the lead. Larry's had him winning the fight all along. In 1959, Ingemar Johansson knocked out Floyd Patterson and took away his heavyweight championship. A year later, Patterson, with one dramatic left hook, took the title back and became the first heavyweight champion ever to regain the championship. Muhammad Ali lost the title and got it back against George Foreman in 1974. Lost it to Leon Spinks and took it back from Spinks in the rematch. In the alphabet morass of the mid-80s in the heavyweight division, Tim Witherspoon accomplished the same feat with one of the three titles. Now Evander Holyfield tries to join Witherspoon, Ali, and Patterson as the only four men ever to lose and then regain the heavyweight championship of the world. I think a lot rests on this round. Holyfield shouldn't try to cruise through it. 
he loses this round, he could lose his chance to become part of history. George, he's never cruised through a round in his life. He just hit Bo with the biggest right hand of the night, and Riddick came back with one of his own. Yeah, he tried to cruise a little bit. He better try to win this fight and not try to cruise. Regardless of the outcome, are these two men matched for exciting fights or what? This is exciting. Holyfield waiting for that good right hand. He doesn't understand. You can lose a fight waiting. Bo lands an uppercut. An exhausted Holyfield loses his mouthpiece. The mouthpiece at center ring. Bo comes back with the uppercut, trying to hurt Evander while he has his mouthpiece out. Bills Lane tosses the mouthpiece to Emmanuel Stewart in the corner. Holyfield, Holyfield unprotected. Is hurt. He's hurt. You're right, George. Riddick's got a huge chance here. And he's going at it with everything he's got. He wins this round. I can't see the judges not going for him. And now Lane decides that it's time for Holyfield to get the mouthpiece back. So Riddick Bowe had a chance there for about 20 seconds to do serious damage. Couldn't quite take full advantage of it. Holyfield's mistake. He waited around for one good right counter right hand, and he lost that round. Right hand by Holyfield. Stops Bo in his tracks. Both fighters looking as though they'd like to have a knockout. Crowd rises to its feet. For the second year in a row, they fought the fight of the year. than Evander Holyfield? I think not. Holyfield has proven beyond a doubt that he's the bigger in the heart. That right hand that he waited too long for, he finally connected. A tremendous finish to a tremendous fight. It was a fight that seemed that neither guy really wanted to end. They kept fighting after the bell was. Good right hand again. Waiting, throwing shot. And now, with the crowd still wobbly and shaking off the effects from that stunning event when the parachutist landed on the apron, with the two fighters reeling from the battle in which four times they continued hitting each other after the bell, with Judy Bow at a hospital and Riddick Bow uncertain as to her condition. <laughs> These two fighters wait for the judges' verdict in a heavyweight title bout. Harold Letterman, our unofficial score. How did you have it? Jim, I had it 6-6. Six 114-114. Six. I got it a draw. I thought that Riddick Bow definitely pulled out the last round to pull out a draw in a fight. Very, very close. And here's the official decision. Cards. Chuck Jampa scores the bout. 114. 114-114. He has it even. Patricia Jarman scores the bout, 115 to 114. Jerry Roth scores it, 115 to 113 for the winner by majority decision. And once again, heavyweight champion of the world from Atlanta, Georgia, Evander Hill, Hill, he won it. Thank you.
He was all of that. Moments after the decision, Larry Merchant had the chance to speak with both the returning champion and the deposed one. Evander, congratulations. You tell me in your words the difference in Evander Holyfield for this fight and the last fight. Uh, first of all, you know, I'd I like to thank God uh, for giving me the courage and give me an opportunity to, to uh, retract the mistakes that I made in the first fight. And I, the, the, the difference is that I smart a, a, a boxer smart to fight. You know, it, it took some time for me to slug with him just to get the respect. Then, you know, I was able to move some. And, you know, and, you know I still had trouble with the fair jab he had, but, but still I was able to counter some of the jab. They hit him with right hand to isolate his right hand. When can you sense that this was going to be different, that somehow maybe he was no longer the champion even during the fight? Well, you know, when I, I came out there with that, uh, that, that thought in mind, you know, I walked by faith and not by sight. You know, I promised everybody that I was going to win this. You know, I knew the Lord would give me strength. All I had to do is just have courage to go in there and fight the fight regardless of the circumstances. Because, you know, he shook me up sometimes and stuff that could have, you know, could have got me into just slugging. But, you know, I thank God for me having a sound mind, being able to break out from that slug and go back to boxing. So the fact that you changed paces, boxing him, slugging with him, do you think that in, in some way that that threw him off, unlike the last time where he can anticipate everything you were doing? Well, well yes, you know, uh, you know, what's important is that a, a person rhythm. When, when a man All right, is... Hi, Sam. Hi, Sam. I'm coming back. I want him again. I want him again. Look at here, y'all. Y'all see that nose? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, the whole thing is that, you know, when a man is in his rhythm, you know, it's just like sprint. Most people might be able to run a long distance because they run in the pace. But if you make him chop it up, then, you know, it, it throws their rhythm. And, you know, he's a big man. To start, to start, to stop and stuff really messed the guy up. So, you know, I, I realized that to get me tired, so I knew it had to make him even tighter. Evander, none of us have ever seen anything like that seventh round. I know you haven't. What exactly did you see when the parachutist almost got into the ring well, you know, I'm telling you, you know, when the guy came in with the parachute, I thought somebody was jumping over the rope, getting ready to do something. I was getting ready to run out the ring myself. <laughs> you know, I, you know, I didn't know what happened. They were coming so fast, and you know, he got hung up on the rope. But you know, I was hoping that he wouldn't punch us. So. You seemed to be gathering momentum at that point, and then there was a long layoff. How did it affect you? How do you think it affected the fight? Well, you know, I, I think it really slowed down the pace. But the whole thing is that I thought I had him tired at the time. He was breathing hard, and I was able to lead off. He wasn't getting off with the jab. You know, he was bleeding a lot. And so, uh, and but what happened is that, you know, when I came back to the corner, I was getting stiff in my back, too. But I was, but I felt that he was getting tired, and I was getting ready to pour it on. Have you ever had a second chance to do something else in your life that you had regretted and corrected anything? Well, well yes, uh, you know, to make the Olympic team. I, you know, I lost the Olympic trial, and I had to come back and fight Ricky Womack twice to beat him. You know, I was determined that, you know, I had to win this thing. What are your plans now as the heavyweight champion? Who do you want to fight next? Will you give Bo a chance? Do you want to fight Lennox Lewis? What, are you, what is your outlook on the championship now, having it a second time? Well, you know, my outlook now is to get home and get to church, and, you know, and be able to thank the Lord before all the people, let everybody know that, you know, it's not I, it's just Jesus that gave me the faith and the confidence to be the champion of the world again. Thank you very much, Amanda. Thank you. Riddick, you explained to us the difference between the first fight and the second fight, except the fact that you won the first and lost this. Why did you lose this fight? Well, Larry, um, I guess the judges saw different. I felt like the, I, I felt like going into the last round it was close, and I felt like I had to dominate the last round in order to, you know, pull off a decision. And um, I thought I did that, but the, um, the judges saw otherwise. You weren't as effective through the middle rounds. Did the fact that he stayed away from you quite a bit somehow change the dynamics of the fight? Mm -hmm. Well, perhaps that could, put, that could put a big factor. As I said earlier, I wasn't going to chase him. And perhaps by me just waiting, uh, he was able to pile up points. I really can't say I did it to the point because I haven't seen the tape. But uh, again, I take my hat off to Ivan Holyfield. I wish him all the luck and perhaps we can do the third time. Perhaps the next one might be greater than Phil in Manila. Were you as prepared for this fight mentally and physically as you were when you were challenging for the title? Well, I think for this fight, I had to do a lot more interviews and things like that. But again, I'm not one to make excuses. The judges say Van der Holyfield won this one. And um, I congratulate him. And I hope he does well, you know, with the championship because um, in due time, I'll be back. 
tell us about the seventh round. What you saw, when you saw it, and how did it affect you? How did that long delay affect the fight? Well, I got cold somewhat, and uh, I felt like at that point, I, I, I had to, it was in my favor. And by the sixth round being stopped and what have you, I had the opportunity to get to cold, and I guess Ivan Holyfield took advantage of it, and he came out, he was strong. Did you know that your wife, Judy, had fainted at ringside during that time? Yeah, I saw it, and I, I kind of, you know, looked back at her, and I saw her taking her out. But I'm not going to say that affected me. Um, I guess part of me wanted to be there for her because, you know, she is pregnant. And um, I don't want to take any from Ivan the Holyfield. He, he won the fight, as the judges would say. But um, I guess by me seeing that, it kind of distracted me somewhat. All right, it wouldn't be human for it for you not to be in some way affected, even if, even as you went back to work. Mm -hmm. Oh, I definitely was affected. But again, I do not want to take anything away from me behind the Holyfield. Because if the judges say he won tonight, uh, my hat goes off to him, and I congratulate him. What are your plans now? I shall return. I'm going to shock everybody. He better knows, uh, I guess maybe I'm in a predicament he was at one point. And uh, I'm just as much uh, determined as he was the last time. So, um, look, I'm just still young, and I'll be back. Thank you very much, Riddick. So let's sum up the events of this landmark evening in the recent history of heavyweight boxing. Evander Holyfield joins Tim Witherspoon, Muhammad Ali, and Floyd Patterson to become only the fourth man in the history of the sport to have lost the heavyweight championship and then won it back in the ring. As for Riddick Bowe, he loses the heavyweight title. And in his 35th fight, he has his first loss. His future changes somewhat. Final punch that numbers paint a fascinating picture of what happened in the ring. You'll see that in our overall punch that computations, Bo is given credit for having thrown more than 250 more punches and landed exactly 100 more than did Holyfield. But when you look at power punches, hooks, crosses, and uppercuts, that tells you a different story. When they stood toe to toe, Holyfield landed at an astonishing 53% rate, and that, in the eyes of the judges, was enough for him to win back his heavyweight title. George Foreman, what does this do to Evander Holyfield's place in the history of heavyweight boxing? Well, he's proven that tag now the real deal. He's recaptured the heavyweight title, which is a few heavyweights of a lot of tribe, but few have been able to do. He did it in grand fashion. It wasn't given to him. He won it. And let me tell you, he puts his name right there with Floyd Patterson and... And well, Muhammad Ali, well, let's who forget did it about by that. beating you in October of 1974. But we've got other great memories to treasure tonight, George. One of them, that Holyfield proved he could beat a man who outweighs him by 30 pounds, and a lot of people didn't think that was possible. Larry Merchant, your final thoughts. Well, I have a few things running through my mind right now, Jim. One of them is, who was that nutball who floated into the picture here disturbing a great event? What does get into some people? Secondly, perhaps we're now closer to getting a resolution to the split heavyweight championship picture. Evander Holyfield is likely to face Lennox Lewis for perhaps as much as $20 million. Third, Riddick Bowe. I think what Riddick Bowe ought to do is call his architect and get that kitchen out of the bedroom of his new home. And finally, Evander Holyfield. I sit here thinking of the 10th round last year when he was staggering around the ring, semi-conscious it seemed, and afterwards he said to me, that's when I knew I had him. The crowd's going crazy, this big kid is throwing punches at him, and what Evander Holyfield is really thinking is, now I've got him where I want him. Jim, fighters like that, you can count on the fingers of a boxing glove, and boxing gloves don't have many fingers. No, I think there's really mm -hmm. only one. Evander Holyfield. And in a way, it's poetic that we go back now to where we started exactly a year ago. You have a veteran heavyweight champion in Evander Holyfield, a cadre of young contenders headed by Lennox Lewis and Michael Moore, and yes, Riddick Bowe. And whatever happens next in this topsy-turvy heavyweight division, we'll continue to bring it to you on HBO. Some final notes. Judy Bowe, three months pregnant, taken to Valley Hospital in Las Vegas after fainting during the seventh round delay, was released later that night, pregnancy intact, and is now resting comfortably at home in Fort Washington, Maryland. Eddie Futch had heart palpitations during the fight and was taken to the Valley Hospital Coronary Unit. He was moved to a regular room on Sunday and released from the hospital Monday. He's now resting comfortably and cites the strain of Bo's training camp for his difficulties. The parachutist, James Miller, now referring to himself as Fan Man, 
was taken to University Medical Center in Las Vegas and released later that night after having been treated for minor cuts and bruises. He was arrested by Las Vegas Metro Police, charged with dangerous flying, and released Sunday on $200 bail. A court date is set for the end of this month. Two civil suits are planned against Miller. One by Bernard Brooks, a member of Bo's camp who was cut when Miller came crashing down. The other suit is being filed by Spencer Promotions, Rock Newman's company, with the charge of disruption of promotion. Spencer Promotions will also ask the Las Vegas prosecutor's office to file a charge of assault against James Miller. If by chance you have tuned in late this evening and haven't had an opportunity to see all of Bo Holyfield and the events that surrounded it, this fight will be rebroadcast on HBO late Friday night, a half hour past midnight at 12.30 a.m. and Saturday, November 13, at 6.30 p.m. Eastern and Pacific Time. So for Larry Merchant, George Foreman, and Harold Letterman, I'm Jim Lampley saying so long from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada. The executive producer of HBO Sports is Ross Greenberg. Tonight's coverage of World Championship Boxing was produced by Ross Greenberg and Rick Bernstein and directed by Mark Payton and Jeffrey Payton Goff. The associate producers were Kirby Bradley, Kendall Reed, and Steve Cohen. The assistants to the producer were David Leipson, Adam Berger, Artie Curry, Rusty Billingsley, and Greg Backer. The production managers were John McCalley and Ralph Cohen. And the technical supervisors were George Wenzel and Bob Hunter.